Well, we're here this morning. It's a fine, crisp, cold winter morning. We're at the beautiful Makings Fishery down in the Midlands. We're on Lake One on Phase One. And despite the fact that we had a flurry of snow in Yorkshire last night, and I woke up to a nice crisp windscreen, we dragged us bones out of bed and pulled ourselves down here for a lovely day's fishing. It would have been so easy to roll over and stay in there, but there's always a little bit of fishing to be had, even on a tough day. So we're gonna go through a few little things and how to catch on these tough, tough mornings. So when you're turning out in winter and you are looking for a great little pleasure session, then what you've got to consider most importantly is location. And look at the venue, have a think about the bigger picture. And on this particular lake, Lake One, this is a little deep area. So the lake is quite varied. It's shallow on that bank and we're on a high bank here. And in front of me here, we've got a nice deep spot. And I know that from the past. It's a long time since I've been here, but I remember that you've got a lot of deep water. So the fish are gonna hold up in that deeper water in cold weather, because this water just holds the temperature a little bit. They all tighten up. And so we find ourselves over here on peg 11, where we've got some depth, where we know there'll be a little collection and nest of fish, which we're gonna just uh, tick away. You know, we're gonna just negatively go at them and try and put some fish in the net. So the first task to tackle today's session was to knock a bit of ground bait up. I always like to get the water into that ground bait, let it soak up so that it's not as active, especially when you're trying to catch a few fish on a tough day. And then the second job was I ran up the bank, picked up my feeder rod, clipped a bomb on and had a little plumb around. And as I probably mentioned, this lake is actually sort of tapered. This is the deep side and I've plumbed up found a nice spot about 20 meters. I did plumb a little bit further just to sort of get a picture of the lake bed and at sort of 35 meters, it started to shallow up. So what I've opted for is that 20 meter line, which is still in the depth, but more importantly, when fishing a feeder, it's far enough away from the bank because I feel that fish sort of centralize themselves. If there's a big deep area or a wide area like this, they'll sit in the middle away from because it's clear away from the bank edges and predators and, and you know sort of birds above and things like that. So I'm just going to sit myself a nice swim in open water and let's see what fish are sat there today. So kit for today, dead simple. I've got a 10 foot Superior SL real real soft rod i've got the lightest tip i can get in it just so i can see those fine indications we're hoping to catch some roach a few skimmers and hopefully a few bream a bit later on so i just want sensitivity and softness i've got a nice fine sinking line on here this is sort of like five pound or 20. Um, just so I can see my bites, you know, it's nice and light i'm not fishing a long way with big feeders so i just want a little bit of finesse as you can imagine, commercial fishery, nice free running rig. So I've just got that down onto a little rubber stopper tied off with a three turn water knot and a small six inch link of the same mono from my main line. I'll probably go into that in a little bit more detail. Nice light hook, O10 bottom, size 18 up so I can fish single maggots, double pinky, that sort of thing. And I'm gonna kick off with a nice small feeder. I've just got myself a little 15 gram smooth hound cage feeder, which I can use just to get that ground bait down to the bottom and I'll probably just fish single maggot to kick off with, drop a few pinkies into my ground bait and fish away. I think it's important to sort of fill your way into the fish because we've done a little bit of background work and we know that the fish are probably holed up here because it's their winter haunt. There's no point in having to feed a lot of bait just to try and draw them in. We're not looking to draw the fish. We're actually going to go to them. So I'm just going to kick off simply by a little feeder full of ground bait and just build a swim nice and steady.
So we spoke about location. The second most important thing in cold times, winter fishing, is bait. I've gone for a really, really simple approach. I've knocked up a couple of pints of a really dark um, ground bait, which is pellet based, F1 dark. That means that in clearer water, it's not gonna be quite as visible, less offensive. Touch a fish meal in there, because I'm hoping to try and catch a few bigger fish and that'll just kind of attract them. And then over the top of that, I'm fishing, I've got a few mixed pinkies, which are always a great up bait, and a few maggots. I've got half a pint of each, which is probably enough for everybody on the lake, twice. Um, but I shall just take that steady away because as I've said, the fish are here. You can always put it in, but you can't take it out. So it's important just to work your way in, feel your way in, simple baits, dead nice and easy. And let's see how that works. So I'm gonna kick off today with a little four square. But oh, I might even find myself dropping down to a three square. Because it's cold, because the fish aren't particularly feeding, and we're just hoping to catch the fish that are sat there, we're not looking to build up a swim. I don't expect there to be lots of fish mopping up everything I'm doing. I'm just expecting a few fish to drop down to the bottom, pick me up bait up, and we're gonna catch them. In warmer months, you might find yourself moving up to a four, five, six square even. When you're trying to put some bait in, because there's lots of small fish, pinching all your loose feed, your maggots, your casters, possibly even worms and pellets. But that isn't the case today. So easy does it, nice and steady in. And let's feel his way through. We start off there, I'll say it again, you can always take, you can always put it in, but you can't take it out. It's an interesting debate about clips and, and feeder fishing and when to use, when not to use one. Do you always use one? And I have times when I think it's mega important and other times when I think it's important not to fish with a clip. It's quite deep here. I had a count of four, just over four seconds on the one ounce bomb when I plumbed up. And uh, that's about 10 to 12 foot, I'm gonna say. And I think when it's deep water, you can sort of pretty much get away with the clip most of the time because you've got the variance of, um, when your feed is landing, it's swinging back towards you. It's not on top of itself as accurately, I don't think, as when it is in shallow water because it's got more of a swing. Sometimes when it's towing, you know, you get a bit of movement. But in shallow water, not like today, I think sometimes it's really important not to fish with a clip because your feed is landing right on top of the feeding fish on, on your swim. And it can kind of spook fish and you can usually tell that by the amount of time it takes you to get a bite. All the time in deep water, your feeder hits the bottom, the fish has probably followed it down and you get quite a quick bite. In shallow water, it's quite noticeable that you can chuck it in sometimes have to wait a little while. And I think that's because the fish have dispersed with the noise, the disturbance, and they come back to you. And I shall probably find myself fishing with the clip most of the day today. Um, because it is hard, we're not casting in that regular. We could be fishing 10 minute uh, chucks, uh, could take that one to get a bite. Especially if the skimmers rock up, you know, they won't be instant feeders. And um, so I, I do think it's a clip day, but bear that in mind when, you, when you're fishing and you're looking at the, these sort of things, the fish might have backed off. Some people like the safety of a clip. You might find yourself, if you do want to fish around your bait and not all in one sort of pile, is you can actually take your clip off and move it a couple of ring lengths, that's about 50 centimetres, so a couple of them and it's a metre. Put a wine back on, clip it back up. You don't have to be super accurate all the time. So something really important in winter, well, it's not just winter, but I think it's more accentuated in the winter and probably more important to consider. You know, you're fishing for fish that aren't moving a lot, bites are quite delicate, and it's really important that you can see your bites. And the only way you can do that, obviously, when you're feeding fishing, is through your tip. I'm just setting my tip actually, so I'll just talk you through that. Just like to make sure that my line's sunk, get it down, got a bit of leaf trouble at the minute, but we can work around that. There it is. And I'm using a really, really 
sensitive tip. This one is actually half an ounce. That might seem quite light to some people, but these fish aren't really moving that much. They're not summer, they're not flying round, and you need to be able to see. I've got quite a you know, thinnish line, it's all 20 main line, which is equates to about five pound. And that just keeps everything a little bit more smooth, a little bit easier to use. It means you can use a lighter tip. And strangely enough, I've actually noticed today that um, it's quite deep here, it's 10, 12 foot, as I've said. And as the line sinks, this tip's that sensitive, you can actually see the weight of the line just tensioning your tip. Now I like to fish with quite a slack tip. These leaves are becoming a bit of a pain, I can tell you. Um, slack as possible, so that when the fish does pick up your bait, there's no resistance. There, I'll just get, get down there, out them leaves. So nice and slack. And there's a little, oh, that was quite a dink. Quite a fast roach bite, that. And of course, quite powerful on that tip because it's such a soft tip. You see everything. Yeah, my bait's done and it's just snatched the tip. Just trying, I'm trying to pop a dead maggot on. Sometimes I find that that can change how your bites are. I'm just putting a few of them dead maggots through my, my feeder. We're feeding pinkies to start with, as I said, but I've moved on to these dead maggots in the hope that that'll just encourage bigger fish and discourage a small roach. So I can actually see my tip under the water, so if I do get a bite, I can still see it. But it just allows you to sink your line. There it is. And that tip is almost straight, but you'll actually see as that line sinks, this tip is so sensitive, it will actually just tighten up a tad. There's a little bit of toe, not a lot, because there's no wind. But I actually think that just goes to prove how soft that tip is. And that looked like a lovely steady bite. Qu quite positive, I think it's important to understand to read your tip because you need to be able to read your bite and what's a bite and what's an indication and what's a little pluck and what's not and that was nice and steady a couple of nods usually a jab or a jolt aren't worth picking up on because the chances are it's all happened before you've even got there and that's it another roach We'll keep wading through these roach until the skimmers and bream come. But a welcome fish on an hard day. Keeping us warm, keeping us moving. So, we've had a good session, uh, we've been here a few hours and despite the freezing cold temperatures and the fact that this morning we had snow and we had ice and we've sat here and we've had bites and we've fished and kept ourselves warm, we've had quite a lot of roach. I were hoping to catch some skimmers uh, and maybe a bream or two, but that's not happened. And, and I've kind of known that the skimmers and bream weren't there because I've had indications and little bites and roach, you know, not, not best through me, they just kept me active um, and I would have liked to have caught some skimmers we all like to just you know the good weight builders and they make for a great day and just to finish it off but we've had these roach and we've kept them coming it's kept us nice and warm and it's just going to prove that you know regardless of what you finish up with in total and what you aim for you've got to make the most of your peg and what we've done is 
despite we've been trying to obviously um, catch a bream by putting two or three maggots on and I've gone a little bit further, I've tried my best to um, outsmart them, sometimes you've just got to accept that fish with the fish you've got, catch them, keep yourself warm on a freezing cold day, keep it simple, as I've proved you don't need tons of bait, you don't need tons of gear, nice little rig, and why wouldn't you come out, enjoy the winter sun, catch a few fish, and pass a beautiful day like we have done today.